we are starting to record, y'all. So if you don't want to be on camera, too bad. So in three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Chaz Evans, and you are listening to a brand new episode of The Three Count. Yay! <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Chaz Evans, and you are listening to The Three Count. Let's run down the roster. Introducing first, he is my tag team partner. He's the second in command. He is the Red Dog, Cliff Miller. All right. New catchphrase. Yeah, that's it. That's that's catchphrase. And mm. introducing second, he is the 17-time African American bull roping, bare knuckling, women beating, world heavyweight WCW national United States heavyweight champion, Chris Idol. Always happy to be here. And introducing my little brother, we call him Napster, and his name is Lil JJ, Josh Evans. I grew up from the little part, okay? I'm legal now. But anyway, I like to thank the sidewalks for keeping me off the street. You know, it's terrible times out here. Make sure you guys wash your hands. And we have with us a special guest on the Three Count Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the man known as Supreme. Yo, I don't know what to do after those introductions, man. I didn't know Chris Idol beat women. Damn. (laughs) Oh, yeah. He's also a uh, 14-time bare-knuckle African-American Negro spiritual champion. Oh, I was there. He's, yeah. he's also a 32-time WCF National United States African American champion. Yeah, he's he's you know always puts himself yeah. over, brother. I, I've I've done a lot apparently. I know he did put himself over against me a couple times. Exactly. Oh, that's not true. I think we've only wrestled like once. Twi- I think you twi- hit- it was twice, and one of the twice. Uh, one of them, uh, someone did uh, try to do a fucking flip over a trash can. Um, and another one that someone hit me in the face oh, with a trash can. Okay, the second one was probably me because I know I didn't try. Hundred percent you. <laughs> <laughs> ignorance. I just I hear a spot just going trash can. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? And I'm like, all right, you know what? I'll run four force. Didn't realize he was actually gonna throw the goddamn trash can. <laughs> hit me right in the face. Wait, who did that? Justin. <laughs> He's talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit! <laughs> That's why I started wild... laughing, because I remember this. Those were some wild spots, like, like with Ratty jumping off of, like, the, the post and landing on the trash can with me uh, under it. Like, I'm always willing I... to take those spots, but that, that throw, the trash can to the face made me mad, because I didn't know it was coming. Wild time. Okay. I'm sorry, buddy. I, I didn't know you were going to run. I didn't know you were gonna throw it. <laughs> I was this right. is why you don't. Hey, this is why you don't wrestle in Burger King, okay? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we got ourselves a great show. Also, let me remind you: if you have not listened to the Three Count Presents, now entering to the ring, Big Trouble Ben Bishop, stop this podcast right now. Go into your settings. Well, not settings, but go back to the episode list in your uh, podcasting platform. Go listen to that episode. And if you have not listened to any part of the greatest wrestler of all time, Superpod, then you, quite frankly, are an idiot and a stupid idiot. Because everyone who is everyone has listened to the greatest wrestler of all time, Superpod, that features the No Spots podcast, the Franken Culture and uh nerds of wrestling nerds of wrestling jesus christ it's a long day long weekend being quarantined and i'm excited for this show let's run through some announcements breaking news that's been going on in the wrestling world uh first things first ring of honor ring of honor has uh officially announced that they have canceled all events throughout the month of june 
that includes their uh, best in the world uh, supercard. Also, the Wednesday Night War is still large and effect. Uh, AEW wins the rating war this week with uh, AEW coming in at a 731,000 viewers and NXT coming in at a 665,000 viewers, which is a drop from last week's 692 viewers. So, and also uh, AEW went up um, from their 683,000 viewers. So at the all-time head-to-head score, if you're keeping score, uh, AEW has won the ratings for the week 23. NXT has won five. Yay! And there has been a tie only once. That is all. <laughs> that is all the weeks for uh, the announce this week's announcements. Let's get right on to it. Let's talk about some wrestling. All right, debate topic number one. So uh, we know uh, Black Wednesday happened a couple weeks ago. Uh, WWE released a shit ton of talent, uh, personnel. So, uh, Cliff, I'm putting you on the spot. Do you have that list on hand like you did last time? Uh, Give me a second. I can get it. All right, I'm going to bullshit for like two seconds so we can get the list. So, um... Yeah, they uh, released a, a lot of superstars uh, at that time. Um, Leo Rush was one of them. Uh, Kurt Angle, uh, the OC, uh, excluding uh, AJ Styles. Um, I know Rusev was one. Mike, uh, the referee Mike Chioda, Eric Rowan, and um, Siri's talking to me on my watch. Um, and I can't think of anybody else. But right, Cliff, you got, got that it. list. I do. Awesome. Run me Mind that you, list. Mind you, it's not updated, so we can do that additions after. So we have Drake Maverick, Kurt Hawkins, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, Heath Slater, Eric Young, EC3, Leo Rush, Kurt Angle, Aiden English, Sarah Logan, Mike Chioda, Rowan, Primo, Epico, Mike Kanellis, Maria Kanellis, No Way, Jose, Zack Ryder, Rusev, Alexander uh, Jasic, Diano Peraza, uh, Tainara Conti, Tino Sabatelli, Cesar Benoit, Mars Wag, or Mars Wang, my bad, uh, Dan Matha, Alyssa Miles, uh, John Kiosta, uh, MJ Jenkins, and then Andrea Listenberger, the writer. And then as far as our furloughs go, we do have Fit Finley, Mike Rotunda, Shane Helms, Lance Storm, Kidman, Devari, Scott Armstrong, Kendo Kachin, uh, Serena De- uh, Dweeb, uh, Deeb, I'm sorry. Uh, Chris Guy, Josiah Williams, Jerry Soto, and Pat Buck. Like I said, a shit ton of WWE employees that were released. Um, one in particular that we're going to talk about in this topic is the man known as Drake Maverick. Um, Drake Maverick is still uh, wrestling even after being uh, officially released. He is in the uh, Cruiserweight uh, Championship Tournament on NXT. And if you watch NXT over the past two weeks, they have turned his release into an angle uh, during the tournament. So the first debate topic is, is WWE turning Drake Maverick's release into an angle insensitive? We'll start off with uh, you, Cliff. We'll go with Supreme after, Idol after Supreme, and me and you, Josh, will come in on the back end. All right, well, let's catch up, right? So we know that. um, Also, we got to add to that list. Jerry Briscoe got released. Oh, yes. You know, Kane Velasquez. Well, he got furloughed. He got furloughed. He got furloughed. Got furloughed. furloughed, homie. Furloughed. Whatever. He's unemployed at the current moment. Um, who else was there? Kane Velasquez was also released. Oh, yeah. Um, Good. And uh, uh, Curtis Axel. Those are the others. Get the hell out. Had a... Hey, don't talk. Don't disrespect Curtis what? Axel like that. Yeah, the social He outcast. disrespected himself by being less than his father. Hey, oh, oh wow. boom! Shots fired already on the three wow. count podcast. I would have said, I would have said he did God, more towards like his grandfather, <laughs> but all right, we'll go. We'll I was go gonna say, come on, Curtis Axel had one of my favorite Intercontinental Championship wins because it was dumb. And that's the only thing he did. He was a tag <laughs> champion. He was David a tag Otunga. champ. B-team, B-team. Exactly. Go, go, and you know what? And Otunga still has his job. 
<laughs> it's because he a lawyer. That man will sue the fuck out of somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, WWE was like, WWE's like, if we ever find ourselves in a case, we have a wrestler who has a law degree. We'll yeah, they're just like, ugh, litigation? Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> Here, David, read this package for us. Let us know how bad we're getting sued from our investors because we failed to tell them that we were actually investing in XFL. Yeah, I feel like, you know, I feel like, like David Otunga, like, wrote out his contract and just straight said, all right, you can never release me. I only can release myself at this time. And they're like, how the hell are you going to do that? I'm a lawyer. I put it all in the document. Me. See, that see this piece of paper I just signed with my name on it? It says that I'm unreleasable. <laughs> like, you already signed it. I just edited a couple things in, like, subsection, like, seven. <laughs> Dead ass. All right, so back to the subject. Drake Maverick. Is it insensitive uh, that they're doing? Fuck yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, they are. And then they low-key try to make it seem like, oh, yeah, Drake, Drake has a chance of winning since he won a match in the NXT lightweight tournament. Like, no, dude, we know he's getting cut. We know he's not going to be attached to attached with it. Next week is going to be his last match, or next week or the week after is going to be his last match. It's fucked up, man. Like, just let that man go, okay? Everybody else on that fucking list that you have is gone, okay? They mentioned Sarah Logan a couple weeks ago on Monday Night Raw. Like, ain't heard her name since, right? And the thing that's fucked up is that WWE tries to play this whole, well, we had this 90-day no-compete clause, but because you can't compete, we can call you back at any time, and you have to show up. Like, no, bro, like, you deadass was like, we're done playing with you as a toy. You go away, okay? I don't see you calling back Matt and asking him to come back and do the, the writer thing. I don't see you calling back Kurt uh, Hawkins. I don't see you calling back any of these other dudes, but Drake Maverick, because that one video he did where he's broken and he's in tears, and you're like, oh, we can totally use this good shit. We could definitely use this shit on TV. Like, man, Vince, just let him go, man. You could replace him with anybody on the goddamn field, okay? I don't see you doing the same thing with Leo Rush. And he was a former lightweight champion. Like, you could have had him on the show, but nah, you you blew it. So, nah, I think it's insensitive, and I think they should have just let Drake kind of ride off in the sunset with his video and just been like, you know, whatever. All right, so I'm going to counteract that. So I don't think it's insensitive. Just because, so... You're entitled to your wrong opinion. It, wow, all right. <laughs> I mean, so, Welcome to the three count. <laughs> so, like, he put the video out on Twitter for everyone to see. Think about this. He's, he's going to take part of the tournament. He's still technically under contract, so they had all rights to use it. More than likely, they needed his permission to actually post that video. And he allowed them to actually put the video out there. So... He's the one who actually allowed it all to get that way. And you got to think about it. This is probably great for him. It, it increases his stock. Like, he's 100% going to get re-signed probably when this is done. Because who the hell would release someone like that with that passion, that promo that tracked so many people to his Twitter? He would go anywhere in the world and get paid. WWE does not want to release something like that for him to get paid somewhere else. they rather pay this man to sit there and do absolutely fucking nothing after this tournament than to let him go off after that promo. So, no, I don't think it's insensitive. Drake Maverick is going to make bread because of this, like, like Listen, 100%. Man, so many people were in the backstage vow- vowing or vouching for Sarah Logan to get signed back. And WWE low-key was like, yeah, we hear what you're saying. And we really feel like the passion that you guys have for Sarah Logan. But fuck Crazy Mary. She's going to be out doing something else on a different prom- uh, in a different promotion. Like, people backstage have been fighting for Sarah Logan. And Sarah Logan's never going to come back. I mean, it's just it is what it is. But I just so- think that... Drake. What did Sarah Logan do? No, no. She, like, hey, man, she didn't yeah. even put up a video. But her work ethic, her work ethic <sighs> on, on main Cliff's event. out here like, pretending Sarah Logan's entertaining. Like, like, like she, is, <laughs> she is young in the game. <laughs> so I would vouch for anybody. I would vouch for anybody who came here and actually did oh. something. I just know Sarah Logan because she's a, her husband is one of the Viking Raiders. But watching her on main event, though, man, she was working and getting better and better and better. First off, week. who the fuck watches main event? Well, clearly, I'm I watched main event because I just referenced oh, it. <laughs> you must be really bored to watch main event. We're on quarantine. I have nothing else to do. Outside of quarantine, people forgot main event even come on. Shit, I forgot they replaced superstars with main event at this point. I low-key have my tablet on the right so playing right. Call of Duty oh, while I'm watching the event on the left. Average, I think yeah. a lot of other players, or a lot of people, I think it's it's one of those things where Drake Drake put out a video, he put his heart on the line, and WWE was like, oh shit, we can just capture this moment really quick, and we'll just take it and run with it. And I, I think it's fucked up. 
So it is what it is at this point. But you got to think about it. He's definitely getting paid for this. Like, you also got to think about it. They have their 90-day no-compete clause. They're probably just getting paid part of their salary. So think about it. While he's competing, he's going to get his full salary while he's competing. So I 100%. Like, this is going to work for Drake Maverick more than you think it is. Even, I'm pretty sure if he thought, like, this was super insensitive, he wouldn't let them post that video. Because there's a lot of shit that you see in social media that doesn't get referenced in WWE programming, but they're referencing it. Like, I 100% would not doubt that Drake Maverick comes out of that group and actually wins. And if they make it as a storyline, I would, like, argue that everybody's like, oh, why did you release him after that? I'm like, he basically did what Zack Ryder did years ago and got himself over and he had to literally go oh shit if we let him go he's literally going to make someone else money like that's like i also don't get me started on the zach Ryder release that was the most stupid thing they could possibly do i was, that gonna man's say, gonna... I was like how did zach Ryder turn out again i was like uh, Mark think Cordova? about this <laughs> think about this zach Ryder got himself over without the machine's help Drake Maverick is literally doing the same exact thing right now with that promo. He got himself over. Because ain't no one was watching 205 Live like that. Half of the people forgot this man was general manager of 205 Live. We just know him from his uh, 24-7 title fiascos. And now we're looking at this Cruiserweight tournament going, we forgot this man used to wrestle as Rockstar Spud. Like, he can go. Like, this is going to make him a lot of money. And if WWE keeps, like, lets him go, he's going to have a job anywhere. Uh, yeah, so, um, I'm pretty certain that this whole storyline was, like, 100% Drake Maverick's idea that he brought to Triple H and said, hey, can we do something with this? I don't think this came from WWE, because this is very uncharacteristic of anything that they would do. (laughs) I mean, why not? Why not use him? He still gets paid for that 90-day no-compete period, so... Why not use him if he's already inserted in it? Yeah. I don't, so I don't look at it. I don't disagree like, with that at all. Yeah. So, yeah. That's how I look at it. Um, I'm, I got to counteract on that. So, Cliff, what were they supposed to do? I got a question. But what were they supposed to do after Drake got released, right? He, they were already promoted that he was in the uh, the tournament. What were they supposed to do? Were, were the... It's weird, man, to me. Like, I think with Drake, man, like, he put that video out because he low-key was just like, look, I have three matches left in this on my on my deal. I'm just going to go do them, and it's whatever. WWE could have just swear it would have just been like, whatever, fuck them. Because they don't – that's what they do. I mean, look at EC3. Like, EC3 put out a thing kind of like – teasing a new character but you don't see wwe out there like oh yeah check out this good shit too they were just like oh, but ec3 but the thing ec3 wasn't being used though ec3 hasn't been promoted or you know for nothing drake was, was drake was promoted in this cruiserweight uh what you call it championship tournament before he got released this is before they released him he was already promoted so what were they supposed to do right just swat just swat him away <laughs> no what the away. Fuck? that's what they oh. did Okay, they, don't so, need, they don't need Drake Maverick yeah. promoting their shit. They could just be like, okay, But he was in there, though. He was already he, promoted. So his my thing he's is... He's already just, there. Yeah, it's a story, he's right? already promoted. Use it. What the, you can't ignore it. It's what was not, that? We live, like, we live was, in a world now where everything... Yeah. Where everything Vince McMahon like, clearly ignored his investors. What do you mean he can't ignore it? We're not it. talking about his damn investors. His squats. That's so all they had to do. Uh-oh. About his Uh-oh. investors. <laughs> Uh oh, Cliff's bringing in alternative facts. He realizes he's wrong, <laughs> and th- he's bringing in irrelevant facts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like, think about it's like this. Cliff Conway. Uh. <laughs> it's a story, right? They can't ignore the fact we live in a world now, and I mean, fact, like what this whole show is based off of it. We, there's so much information we can get out about wrestling. That all the backstage stuff we know about it. We know way too much than what we knew. Back in the day, so it's not like they can ignore it. This was big fucking news. So Cliff, the wrestling I, I, world was on uh, fire. Oh, they were shitting the thing. No, no, no. When all these motherfuckers oh, no. got released, 
They can hold on, uh, don't don't get it wrong, Chaz. They can ignore it. Just like when AJ comes back, they're gonna ignore that Gallows and Anderson disappeared. But that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying is that this had to be Drake's idea. Yeah. Because the and WWE yeah. way to do it would have been, like you said, just swap them out with another cruiserweight. And they wouldn't have said anything about Drake. They wouldn't have said anything. They'd have just been like, uh, I don't know, for example, uh Drew Gulak is in the tournament now. Uh, he, really you know, they just, it just would have <laughs> like that. I couldn't think of anyone else from like a cruiserweight off the top of my head. <laughs> like oh, look, oh, look, it's Kalisto. Well, he, he, Kalisto's out with a shoulder injury. Come on, Cliff. Don't you do your research? Uh, no. So Cliff, so Cliff, God. back to your EC3 point. So think about the reach. No one cares <laughs> about EC3. I'm just saying he, he, he <laughs> combated it with EC3, but look at it. Oh, like, that is terrible. EC3 has hasn't like, like, done look anything. At the reach. His video only got 61,000 views on Twitter. Drake Maverick's video, 2.3 million people have watched it. Yeah, but everything else at WWE, like, okay, so we're so we just going to pretend like WWE didn't ignore the fact that Roman Reigns got replaced at WrestleMania and hasn't mentioned his name in the past three weeks on SmackDown. Perfect well, example. But somebody I'm, I'm like, got, had somebody, to be Drake's whoa, 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 idea. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I get it. I get it. Right. And I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Okay. I'm just saying, I think it's fucked up. And I, I grant it. So, I, oh, I agree so that wait, Drake. So wait, so wait, wait. Like, so Maverick goes think, into the office, pitches the idea. They're just supposed to say, nah, you're good. Just go home and collect your check. Yeah. Right. Nah, why would you not capitalize? <laughs> yeah. No sense at all. That makes no sense at all. Bruh, they would, that's more insensitive than just be like, nah. We don't want to use your idea to use your release as a story. Yeah, Bye. Like That's in more head. insensitive than using it as a story. <laughs> I'm they're like, hey, thanks. We'll take it into consideration, Drake. And that's, that's it. Uh, <laughs> See, and, and, and that's the exact reason. If you, if you were running that and you just said, yeah, that's we'll, we'll consider it. on the Tony Khan man, payroll. Yeah, like this man would go 0-3 in the tournament. You'd be like, all right, bye. Goodbye, Drake. And this man would go to any fucking promotion, <laughs> do that shit once. And no. now you're sitting there looking like a dumbass no, that you no, released no. that talent. First of all, like, mm. I think Rockstar's blood is going to be a star in whatever promotion he goes to, right? I just think WWE fucked up, like, fucked up everything else up. Because I actually started watching Impact because of Rockstar Spud. But I'm not going to sit here and, be, and ignore the fact that, yeah, he did this great promotion. WWE's going to wash him out anyway. He's going to go, he'll probably go we one don't, or two. We don't, we don't know that yet. Whatever. He'll, you show, never he'll know. show up. He'll show I'm up gonna, at Ring of Honor and do some shit. I know, but, but he's also, get, let me get you he's in also let me more get you valuable. In there, He's also more valuable by continuing to be on WWE programming than he would be just sitting at home. Just want to point that out. So in the long run, it works out for him better that he's still doing stuff. And just That's imagine... I'm oh, sorry. I'm going to get... Uh, JJ, let me get you in there on your point. Then we're going to move on to the, uh, to oh, the next Oh, I'm so topic. sorry. forgot about you, Josh. My bad. Real Cliff's sorry. out here making us get hot <laughs> with, his, with his alternative wrong facts. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Oh, there's the walk off. We got our first walk off of the show, and it wasn't me. <laughs> Told y'all it was gonna be a walk off. <laughs> Go ahead, JJ. Get your point um, on. So if it's yeah, you see if, what the fucking point is though is no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> is, it, is it insensitive? Nah, not really. It's, it's just a business move. It's just a business play. Um, we've seen Vince wrestle God. Isn't that kind of sensitive? Isn't that insensitive a little bit? He wrestled God. Uh, Don't get me started we, on that we, shit. We, 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 we've that. seen uh, bra and panties matches. Isn't that kind of insensitive? Well, now it is. But, I mean, this is the WWE we're talking about, and they're just using it for promotion. And guess what? It probably gets more heads watching um, the tournament because Drake is what? In it, and like I said, he's it's been two point three million, four million, whatever the fuck. Two point three. Thank you, Supreme. So yeah, I mean, like, why the fuck not? Why not use it? Uh, that's that's the that's the point I was saying as well. So yeah, take um, that, Cliff. Uh, All right, Cliff. Oh, Cliff wants Drake to oh, be wait down a minute, on his wait a minute, wait a minute. rattling two point three million on his on up it. on the wait, street. Wait, 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 wait. You want to use two point three million as like the idea? 
that oh, more oh. people are gonna watch NXT's lightweight tournament. How no, did they? Oh, wait, 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 wait. We no, didn't no, no, say no, no, we no. get people to watch it. Well, he said it's gonna get people to care right. about yeah, Drake exactly. Maverick. <laughs> oh, that was great. See, you're doing alternative facts again. That wasn't the debate. We weren't saying is this gonna make NXT viewership go up. <laughs> the debate clearly is it's not. Drake Drake Maverick 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 clearly it's valuable. not. They lost again. So let's look. It's okay. not. Let's put this out. Okay, that's real great. Yeah, the six hundred thousand people wanted to watch that's Drake it. Maverick win one match. Cool. All that's right, let's, that move, let's, let's move on. Let's move on. Yeah, move <laughs> it along. I was gonna say, I know for myself, I don't even watch either program live, so (laughs) (laughs) it don't mean shit. All right, so we're gonna move on to our next topic. So uh, let's uh, get to it. So the state of Florida could be allowing fans back into live events as early as next week, despite the coronavirus pandemic going on. Uh, The Florida governor, uh, Ron DeSantis, I probably uh, pronounced that wrong. DeSanta, whatever, fuck him. Um, wait, 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 what's his first name, Chaz? Ron. Oh, that explains everything. <laughs> <laughs> and so pretty much his reopened Florida task force has issued a three-phase plan to reopen the state of Florida. So phase one begins on Monday, um, May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. To uh, Trademark, the, you can't no, say that. For the... <laughs> The, the the mouse is gonna be on your ass. <laughs> the mouse for the, is for, on you your know, ass. Okay. Nope, Let the me get through this. Let me get through the ass. damn backstory <laughs> and the damn topic before y'all get on my ass. God damn. <laughs> yeah, they were straight they on your did. fucking yeah. bumper. Oh, good right. gracious. Now this anyway. episode got copyrighted by Disney. Phase one begins on Monday um, for much of Florida, and with the exception of Miami and a couple other counties, I think Palm Beach as well. So. The phase one pretty much states that people are encouraged to not gather in groups of larger than 10 and employees continue teleworking and screening employees for symptoms of COVID-19 if they have been reported to work. But with that being said, though, while theme parks are still going to be closed, the report states that the following, which could include WWE and AEW, large spectator sporting events should use strict social distancing guidelines and limit occupancy of venues to 25% of building capacity. So with that being said, is it too soon to bring fans back into live shows? Supreme, let's start this off with you. I'll, me and JJ will follow after that. And Cliff and Chris Idle, y'all can go fight it out uh, to who goes next after us, because y'all on y'all on edge this week. <laughs> I mean, hell yeah, it is too early to bring people back. Like the one thing about this, the one thing that I'm scared of for this virus is the second wave, and we haven't fully even flattened the curve. So you're gonna let. Uh, let's say it was 25 percent of the venue. Okay, they're still at the PC. Let's go. That's 20 people. Let's say one of them motherfuckers, because you know there's going to be one, is hiding <laughs> the fact is hiding the fact that he had the virus. That one person, even with the social distancing six feet, they're going to try to go for high fives and try to pop off in the crowd and stuff like that. Spits everywhere, and they're not going to wear their mask because it's Florida. And now you got. Now you got mm-hmm. twenty people. Now you got twenty more people infected. Now you got some of the performers infected. Now you got the crew infected. Now we don't got wrestling at all. It's it's, it's a compounding effect. I feel like they need to stick with the empty arena shows. Like even if it allows like more wrestlers and talent to come down, and they hopefully can you know put on better productions, less uh, taping the stuff. But like keep. I I personally would not even show up even though we're in Florida, so people are dumb as hell, because if you saw what happened in California with all the people showing up at Huntington Beach, you know damn well they're going to do exactly like that at the Performance Center. And you also got to think about it this way. They're in their base, like, for Florida. If you bring in one infected person in there, none of the entire facility is screwed. Like, don't even care about the shows. Like, literally, they walk in... They have it on their person, like literally their clothes that they're wearing. They rub against anything, they touch against anything, everything's shut down. We don't have wrestling at all. So 
as much as I want to see it live, nah, because I'm sad about Money in the Bank not being here. I, that's my favorite pay per view besides the Rumble. Same, same. But yeah, yeah. motherfuckers, just just stay away. Like I don't mind watching it like from afar. Just I would like to keep wrestling, and people come, we're gonna lose wrestling. So. Uh, gotta agree with you on that. Um, I agree. I think it's extremely way too soon. Um, by to the same points that Supreme was making, we are still not, you know, past the curve. Um, let's 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 put it in, let's put it like this: we have a president that told us to inject ourselves with disinfectant. I become Mister Queenie. Yeah. I mean, I've been drinking uh dis- disinfectant wipes for the last week. He told me to. That's the that's the best kind. That's the best. Yeah, he, kind. he told me I get an extra twelve hundred stimulus check if I keep eating them. Oh god. I do. I I just I don't think it's really you know the right time to have fans go back into uh into these live shows even with it being twenty five percent of maximum occupancy. Like you said, Supreme, the PC is around the max capacity is what we're talking three hundred people at least. So. But let's talk about AEW. Let's say they want to put uh, fans back in there. Daly's Place in Jacksonville, we're talking what? Almost, how many, what's the, we're talking like 1,000 people almost. Yeah, you're looking at, yeah, about uh, 750. 750 people. 750 people walking around. Like you said, that's, you don't know who, who got what. You mm-hmm. got to, people got to treat this virus like it's HIV and AIDS in the 80s. And, and you also got to think about it this way, like domestic terrorism. You know how, like, you see those people licking the stuff in Walmart and they got arrested for it? Some some asshole is going to come there and literally do something to try to get a wrestler they hate sick. Exactly. So like, there's always that one person. So I don't think they should. I think it's extremely too soon. And this just shows how incompetent some of the, uh, our country's governors are, like the state of Florida. And... I don't think I, 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 no, no, I'm okay. I've gotten used to watching wrestling with nobody in there. I've gotten used to fucking crickets during high spots. Okay. I will enjoy double or nothing with nobody there, even if there were people there. I will enjoy money in the bank, whether there were people there or not. That's just my take. There shouldn't be anyone there. No, no, no. There still isn't a fucking vaccine or a cure. No. No, yeah. no, no. Because the next the thing, you know, what we'll be talking about on, on a show, we'll be talking about that such and such from WWE or such and such from AEW has, you know, has the virus now, and now we don't have wrestling. See, you know, I, look, see, I, I felt that way when I got a message that said Vaughn Miller from the Broncos had the virus. I was just like, hi, in the hell? Well, he, he's here now. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know, yeah, I know. I, I pay attention. Like, like it takes one thing, one, one. sneeze, exactly, one something. I stepped in a puddle that some homeless guy with a fucking coronavirus pissed in, and now everything is infected. Plus, I hate. Exactly. I don't. I don't know if that's how it's how that happens, but yeah, I, I, I see you. I know your point. I, I know your point. It's <laughs> it's a bacteria. It lives. Yeah, it lives. So like it like. Yeah. You're walking down the street and you trip and fall. Like, you can contract it right there because you're going to, like, scuff yourself off and be like, oh, fuck. I know, but somebody's pissed. Like, I just don't know. (laughs) Okay, you you know Baltimore. Someone probably pissed somewhere, and and it's Mm -hmm. fucking Florida. You're like, like, this dude pissed and spit in here, and then I tripped and fell in the piss and got spit in my face, and that's how I got the coronavirus. If we have any listeners in Florida, can y'all try that down there and let us know if it can... You can contract oh it that way. God. I'm curious. You no, know, go try it. They'll try it. Yeah, I'm curious. Well, I know. Nothing like ratchet <laughs> ass food. Anyway, we're gonna go back on Nothing. topic before. No one, we, no uh, one in this podcast is liable infected. for someone getting uh, coronavirus because of that. I'm just gonna put that out there. You know, yeah. Like before act. we, before we act, you know, make this uh, pandemic even worse because people will listen to us. Go ahead, JJ. Um, first off, I want to say shout out to our governor, uh, Larry Hogan. He, he's a real G. Uh, second of all. Um, the Florida governor is stupid. The Georgia governor is retarded. He didn't even know that, uh, it was like asymptomatic. You could still, uh, you know, get it even though you don't show any symptoms. I don't know how the hell you just figured that out. And like, in like April, when we knew about this back in like early February, but all I'm going to say is 
No, they should not. I agree a thousand and fifty percent with what uh, Chaz said and what was Supreme was saying. Um, all it takes is one fuck up, and there's no wrestling. All it takes is one single asshole, and like Supreme said, this is Florida. Florida does the craziest shit. <laughs> it it's just not worth it, and the problem is the reason why they're doing this is because the rich people they're they're like oh my god my businesses are losing money i need to get some money more get some money back so they're like okay well if we can open up some businesses maybe and so that you guys get an influx of cash back we'll be gucci that's the real problem here the some of the rich people are losing a lot of a lot a lot of money and they need their money back so they're gonna be like oh well if we open up these businesses maybe we can get some little bit of cash but it's about the safety, and it should be about the safety. Um, all the other companies, like you know, Amazon, that what they're doing is messed up. But yeah, it's it's bad. I think it's a bad idea. It's a terrible idea. Um, stay, you guys should stay safe. We should care about people's lives instead of money, because if you die. What's the point of the money? That's it. That's all. All right, go ahead, Cliff and uh, Chris. Fight it out. Who's going next? I don't give a shit. Nah, Chris, Chris can go. Let him, here you go. You don't want to go, Cliff? No, it's fine. I'll wrap it up. I'm not worried about it. Okay. Um. Yeah. Well, that, yeah was, well, pause. Uh, that was anticlimactic. I definitely wanted to see y'all argue. <laughs> I'm so upset. I am, I wait a minute. Wait, pause. Stop. Well, I instigated the fuck out of that so y'all could argue some more, and y'all just was like, "No, go ahead." It's cool. <laughs> Cause if I, look, 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 you try to start an instigation on something they probably gonna agree about, so they ain't do nothing. <laughs> right now, like, I'm a little. Uh, well, upset, yeah, like, yeah. Hey, this is trying if to, like, this was the Drake Maverick thing, people be yelling again, and Cliff about to run away like usual. <laughs> God damn, I really Yeah, I, I feel like this, this is like a pretty unanimous topic. It is definitely too soon. And then if you're going to do it, uh, the only way to really do it safely is you test everyone one by one at the door. But are they going to really do that? Who really knows? They'll probably, know. it's Florida. So they'll just be like, come on in, guys. Ah, it's fine. So, um, but yeah, I think it's way too soon. Like you said, that second wave. It's coming. It's gonna hit somebody. Uh, it's just best to just keep it, just keep it, keep it the way things are. Um, it's just a lot safer that way. They are they're already at risk by still performing, which I mean it's a choice that they you know they're performing because they want to. Those that are still doing it, but there's no reason to risk it any further than that. So. We're gonna go through one more here. thing, and all the motherfuckers that show up to those shows when they open the doors, they deserve to die. Oh shit! God, oh, shit. God <laughs> fucking! Di- all right, I'm gonna fly down there just on purpose now. <laughs> I 100 percent do like, that. I mean, look, but think if you if they open it up, you go in, you catch it. Who, what, who are you gonna be mad at? Who, who's fault? That's just not WWE's fault. So they tell you come here. Yeah, they like think about that. Go in there. Yeah, could you imagine? It's not Tony like, Khan's fault. Tony Khan didn't drag you into Dally's place. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine, like, like all of the legal things they would have to do? Like, oh, hey, I went to a show. They said it was fine. I contracted coronavirus. I blame WWE. Somebody paid me $500 million. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, WWE or AEW legal teams can be like, don't look at us. I didn't tell you coming here. The governor but you, did. But you damn well know. You, you're going to see a couple <laughs> lawyers be like, hell yeah, I'm going to take that case. <laughs> and, and, like, like... You know what exactly what, us. what exactly is gonna happen is someone's gonna get paid over this, and I damn they well are. know if they gonna open they it up. Should. I might have to be flying down there to get paid about it. Let yeah. me let me get that real quick. So let's go let's go through a history lesson, right? Back during World War One, we had a big flu come through, right? People know it's the Spanish flu. It actually started in the U.S., but it kind of spread throughout, right? So yeah. it it got a lot of people sick, and a lot of people were okay, right? And yeah. they were out, right? They got a lot of people sick, but then. What happened was, as everybody started to reopen everything too early, and a second wave came through, and bam, 20 to 30 million dead right there on the spot. 
we know that mm-hmm. the second wave coming, and we're not doing anything to prevent it, right? And you have nope. people, and then out of all the places that you could open, you open up Florida first, really? Yep. The same state that had people literally selling tickets to go to heaven, those are, that's yeah. the state that we chose. We chose the mm-hmm. state where Casey Anthony even knows the location of her daughter, but, uh, you know, mm-hmm. nobody found her guilty. You mean to tell me that we're talking about the same state that had an epidemic where people were eating their face, other people's faces because mm-hmm. they're high on bad salt? That's Waka. the state that we chose. Waka. That's the state we chose? Come on, mm-hmm. man. We I mean, know some shit's going to go bad there, okay? You said Everything those, goes bad. not real? <laughs> Actually, you know, Cliff, now that you say all of that, it seems like Florida is the perfect place to open up first. It's like, <laughs> if someone's going to die, let it be them. <laughs> I mean, Florida and Georgia, you know, like, it, just, it still makes me mad that Georgia's going to let kids uh, drive with just their parents' permission. Right. Hey. I'm only halfway kidding. I'm sure there's someone in Florida that I like. I mean, there's a lot a of people at all to die. But so I think I think it's crazy that we're we're looking at the history of like one pandemics and we've seen stuff happen. And then two, we're watching like the state of Florida, like say, hey, we'll start letting people come into these places. You know, they're not going to put their uh, the regulations out there. They're not going to be serious about the regulations. Right. WWE could definitely have, like we said, a mass capacity of 300 people. You can you can test people as they come in. Right. And if we're going to do 25 percent, you could test those people as they come in. Daily's place, we said a thousand people. We're figuring two hundred fifty people, fans in the stands. You can test all those people, right, as they come walking through and we'll see what happens with that. But the problem is is even our, our best test that we have for coronavirus it takes about a week and a half to read. So you're not getting anything. Unless you're going out there and telling these people like, Hey, we're gonna sell these tickets to exclusive fans like the green t shirt guy, but you have to send us back. A, a lab that shows that you don't have the coronavirus before you can enter in the facility. Like, there's probably going to be things that they have to do first to let these people in. But the problem is, is they're not going to do that, right? And even when you show up to the door and you get your swab, like, mm-hmm. it, in the mouth or in the nose, they're not. Nothing's going. It's not going to show anything. There's nothing there, you know. I know Joe Rogan yeah. has got. He went under fire because he's had so many people getting tested, right, for the coronavirus through antibodies. Like, if you have antibodies, clearly you already had it. If you don't. There's a chance you probably don't have it now. But the problem is, is it's not accurate to a degree. And even the test that we have here in Maryland that is being under lock and key and protected by police and National Guard, South Korea has already said these tests weren't the most accurate tests that we have. They're a good test, but they're not hundred they're not they're not even ninety percent accurate. So what are we really doing? You know what I mean? Like just keep it closed, have people in the building. If you're gonna have to have people in the building, have essential people in the building only not fucking random ass fans because like we've like hey, to jj's point right there's gonna be some fucking moron out there who has he's gonna walk in and be like hey miss and then miss will be like what he's like Ugh! and you're gonna be like fuck <laughs> this idiot so it's gonna happen it's going to happen and just be smart just be like nah we'll keep the building closed only wrestlers and people are gonna be in here well i do have an idea to solve that Yo, everybody's wrestling in hazmat suits. Fuck it. <laughs> anyway. Do you know do you know that we're gonna have three wrestlers die of heat exhaustion? Because them exactly. shits are not fucking it's not like you can it's not like you're running a twenty three nineteen and you're hoping that the hazmat suits are twenty three nineteen. Wow, these Disney references gonna definitely get us goddamn copyrighted. That damn mouse. <laughs> that damn mouse. But anyway, speaking of the mouse. So there, this is probably pr- the biggest news to come out of the wrestling world this week. There, I don't even know how to begin to t- talk about this because it's quite frankly interesting and uh, shocking. But uh, Dutch Mantel, uh, wrestling legend, has said that he uh, put out a tweet saying that he overheard that the WWE are in talks with ESPN and Fox over a potential sale of the company. Yes, WWE could be sold to Fox or ESPN, which means Disney, because Disney owns Fox. Can I start this one off? 
Uh, oh, wow. Sh- sure. All right. Uh, I don't... Oh, wow. <laughs> Yo, we have a lot to say on this. Good. Oh, my God. It's going to be so fun. <laughs> All righty, okay. then. Um, so, uh, Idol, you'll go first. JJ second. Uh, so, I... Cliff, you'll go after JJ. I'll go after you. And then, Supreme, you take us on the back end. I got you. Pause. Please. Please don't <laughs> reference it like I'm that. Take us on the back end. What's wrong? Oh, I realized. What <laughs> oh, my God. Really? Oh. really? <laughs> well, then. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, man. Go ahead. Go ahead, Justin. I mean, I, Chris, All right. I, I'm breaking K-Fabe okay. all over again. <laughs> All right. So I got a few things to say about this. First, I love Dutch Mantel. But, um... In terms of uh, the inner workings of WWE corporate business, uh, who is he? I didn't know he had like the corner office next to the board of directors meeting room where he would get this information. Like, you know, Dutch Mantel saying that would be just like, you know, one of us saying that. that. That's first off. Like, he's not a credible source on that topic. If he heard that there was like a new head of creative, I'd listen to Dutch Mantel. The sale of WWE, mm, I'm not going to Dutch Mantel, especially since nobody else has reported anything like that. It was just Dutch, his one tweet, and he didn't say anything else about it. And no one else, no other news outlet, like Uncle Dave didn't say anything about it. Wade Keller, name your favorite reporter. Not even Brad Shepard, everyone's favorite journalist. Fuck <laughs> Brad Shepard. <laughs> I agree. Uh, secondly, uh, WWE is not getting sold to anyone as long as Vince McMahon has anything to say about it because he is not about to give up control over his baby. <laughs> WWE will be owned, operated, controlled by the McMahons as long as Vincent Kennedy is breathing. So I don't see, especially not to two like two entities. At the same time, like, it'd be one or the other, maybe, but no, like, but let's be real. If anything, Dutch was probably, he probably heard some old information about the, them trying to sell the pay-per-views or something. That's probably what he heard and got it mixed up because he's old. <laughs> hey, don't call Grandpa Zebekiah old. Hey, listen, I love Dutch Mantel. I love it. I love him. <laughs> Honestly? You know what? You know it'd be freaking cool. I would like to see Vince McMahon versus Mickey fucking Mouse. Oh my god. If this was to happen. Yo, think about it. Mickey Mouse. Vince McMahon. WrestleMania. Take up the spot of other talent. Like <laughs> WWE is so used to doing. And have them go on for 30 minutes. This is perfect. Guys, I don't know why you guys don't see the value in this. Shit, we could get Tom Holland in there. Uh, fucking RDJ. Uh, Chris Evans. Uh, we could, we could, Stephen A. Smith. Oh my God. Yo, don't you guys see the cool thing about this? No. It's just me. If you watch South Park, Mickey Mouse would fuck up Vince McMahon. That is so true! A hundred percent. As soon as he said that, I'm like, yo, this man killed uh, Winnie the Pooh. He will fuck up Vince McMahon. Go ahead, Cliff. Go ahead. So for our listeners on the podcast, what they don't know is that behind Supreme's head is a clear reason why WWE is going to get bought. Okay, go ahead, Supreme. Look behind you. You'll see him. So, Pixar, <laughs> Lucas Films, ESPN, Fox, Marvel, and then WWE. Okay, that's the stones right there that Disney needs to fucking wield to run everything. No, <laughs> um, I think okay. So, yes, it came from one source. Yes, it could not be. It may not be. It's probably not credible. It it's probably not likely to be happen. But I find it interesting that ESPN or Fox, and I know you said it was two entities, but the Fox channel is actually owned by Disney. So they could possibly, like, 
the only the biggest problem I have with it right though is that if ESPN was to buy WWE, right, Monday Night Raw is getting moved. It's not gonna be a. It's God damn it, he's got a fucking Infinity Glove. <laughs> so um, WWE is it's not going on Monday Night anymore, right? Because when, during football season, Monday Night Football, everybody knows that's what's running there, right? So WWE's Monday Night Raw is getting moved, right? And Fox isn't gonna put Monday Night Raw on on their channel so it's just you know they're gonna they're gonna wash it it's gonna go somewhere else fox obviously still has smackdown you know they'll probably get control of something else i don't know i just i find it i just i would not want this to happen at all right because i just think one disney already owns way too much shit and they're only getting stronger at whatever they're trying to get accomplished and i just think uh i, I don't know man i can't i can't vibe with it so i just want Vince to be Vince and be like, fuck that. I have some good shit here and I'm going to stay in this direction and stay away from the mouse. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, I'm sorry. I hate to cut. I hate to cut you off, Cliff. I hate to cut you off, but I have breaking news. OK, breaking news from my phone just now. OK, Florida Governor Ron, whatever his fucking name is, makes misleading remarks. Wrestling events are not opening anytime soon. So, God. with wow. that being, all right, <laughs> I'm glad we were um, all on the same page because somebody would be getting bashed right now for their wrong opinion. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> facts, oh, so facts. <laughs> so, uh, I want to put it out there uh, for further context: the policy of allowing sporting events at 25 percent capacity is not a part of the governor's newly signed. Executive order effective May 4th. This is only phase one suggestion from the task force, the reopened Florida task force. That's you. Well, I'm glad so, someone in, in his department pulled him aside and said, are you crazy? <laughs> and you need to change are this you shit sure before you that? get assassinated. <laughs> yeah. Like, I understand we're Florida, but we can't be that Florida. So <laughs> I want to put it out there. Let's take it back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do want to put it out there that this is this is that's I, the most competent thing I ever heard Florida say. Like this literally just came to my phone oh. as a notification, literally as we were talking, that yeah, this fans it is not a part of the phase one for the reopened Florida task force. So okay. uh, yeah. everyone, that's everything okay. that we talked about in that second, give it a uh, few more days, and Vinny Mac will cut a check. You know what? <laughs> That doesn't so that doesn't surprise I me if that does happen. I but there's ten mil. There's ten mil. Huh. I was gonna say, I was gonna say this is about to get us. I was gonna say this is about to get as awkward as Marco Rubio drinking water randomly okay. while trying to give a speech. It's all right. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it a thousand. You know what? I'm gonna keep it a thousand. I fly down to Florida right now. Vince cuts that check. I'm gonna dress up as one of the funeral yeah. guys with the coffin. Give it a, yeah. give it a couple, out. Give it a couple of out. more days, and they'll be pay, they'll be cutting the check. And they'll be like, here you go. We were going to give this to Cain Velasquez, but let's give this to you guys uh, to make an amendment. <laughs> so I'm going to put my point across. I'm going to make my point now. I'm taking control of my show. <laughs> I'm taking control of my show now. So um, <laughs> my point uh, for, the, for the, uh, the, the topic, whether or not... Um, for, what was the fucking topic? The House talking? of the Mouse. House of the yeah. Mouse buying WWE. House, yeah, House of the Mouse buying WWE. I don't think this is true. I don't think, like uh, Justin said, Dutch Mantel is not a credible source as far as the inner workings of the WWE. He, he's an old guy. Maybe, like he said, on creative, he might know something. But the inner workings in the business part of WWE, I don't think he no. knows anything. But... If a deal were to happen with WWE selling anything, not necessarily their company as a whole, but anything regarding the company, it would not surprise me. WWE, is, well, not WWE, Vince is in some hot shit, as I've ex stated before, with his investors and with the fact that he invested mo WWE money into the XFL, the investor call apparently didn't go as well as it would hope. They're losing money during the pandemic, blah, blah, blah. So as far as them selling the company as a whole, no, I agree with 
Chris Idol. WWE will be run by Vincent Kennedy fucking McMahon till the day he drops dead. And even then, Vince McMahon will probably still run WWE in the grave. <laughs> BKM. I, I, just, I, I want to point something out, too, uh, that I forgot to add. Um, that adds to the point that Vince selling WWE makes it even more uh, of a ludicrous idea. This man fired the two co-presidents of his company because they disagreed with the pay raises that he was giving <laughs> to WWE superstars. <laughs> Straight up said, oh, well, you guys disagree? Get out. <laughs> I was going to say he also fired him because they were, he was like, I want to sell pay-per-views again and not do this network thing. I don't want to exactly. give away WrestleMania for free. And they're like, no, give away WrestleMania for free. He's like, fuck out of my building. <laughs> exactly. Which adds, and, and this was just a few months ago. So I have no reason to believe that suddenly he went from that to, yeah, let's sell the ESPN and Fox. What the hey? You know what, though? I will say, I think selling the pay-per-views to ESPN and Fox, though. Now, that's what I think would happen. I I can see that. And that's what I'm thinking the Dutch may have heard and just got it mixed up. Yeah. If and. Yeah, he's old. His ears are probably going out, you know. Well, that's, a, you know, you know how it is. You know how the game of telephone works. Facts. Supreme, go ahead. So I'm going to keep it a thousand. I would not be surprised if I saw something that Disney actually bought the company. Now, what I think is probably going to happen is we saw, I, can't, I think it's Kevin Dunn sold $1.5 million worth of WWE stock. So I can see Disney actually sitting there and investing in WWE because it's nothing like the house of mouse having their hands on anything that's media related. Cause think about this. They, they throw, let's say Vince $500 million and go, Hey, we want to have fucking WrestleMania at a Disney theme park. Think about that. Do you know how much money Disney would make just there? Shit, they can, like, they have arenas and stuff like that. Not even WrestleMania. Throw a pay-per-view at a Disney theme park. Disney oh, yeah. Disney has those arenas. Force people to come oh, yeah, to yeah. Force people to come to Disneyland. Force people to go to Disney World. Keep their revenue streams going. And even that, like, they can take properties. Like, if you look at it, like, how many crossover events we have with Marvel and stuff like that? Like, shit, all the Scooby-Doo goddamn movies. Could you imagine a, a John Cena and an Iron Man movie animated? You That'd know that will sell instantly. So I really think the House of Mouse could do a minor control state. Like, I can see that being true. Like, oh, yeah. not the full company. I can see them sold. buying shares, yeah. Like, they literally buy maybe, let's say, 20% of the company and put their influence there. It opens up so many gateways when it comes for the WWE, and it gives Disney an, another stream of revenue. Like, Disney could take over WWE's content library, the, dissolve the WWE network, put it on Disney+. Plus. Think about that. You raise Disney+, Plus like $2, and now you have the, the full WWE library. Years. Let me the hey, that saves me nine ninety nine a month. Shit, now actually, now think about it. I'm not. That's not a bad idea. Hey, hey. First of all, no. You had me at having WrestleMania or a pay per view. I want to see Money in the Bank on Space Mountain now. I'm just saying yeah, like, it's got to happen. <laughs> like, like the things you can do if you have the House of Mouse in your back pocket, yeah. Bruh, You got like. I think about this one because I'm super big into esports. Could you imagine random refunds of WWE content coming on Disney Channel and stuff like that for kids to get influenced cool. by it? No, like, I can oh, see cool. a partnership. Like, oh, cool, see John a- Cena's wrestling. Okay. I want to know more about John Cena. And it goes from there. And then you think about it. Disney could buy their stake, like USA Network stake in the WWE. Take Monday Night Raw, take or take NXT, throw it on an ABC. I know we're talking about Monday Night Football. No matter when it happened, Monday Night Football will always compete 
with like another program for Disney. Because watch, Monday Night Football comes on ESPN, but then you have ABC having their Monday Night content. They don't care. They're making money either way. So if they're looking at Raw or they're looking at Monday Night Football, you're making money because you always have people who say fuck wrestling and you always have people to say fuck football. I'm going to watch wrestling. They're going to make their money either way. So it's diversifying their money streams. If money's coming in no matter what, they don't care about the views. They're going to generate revenue all the time. And then football's not 24-7. WWE's 24-7. Look, we have 16 months, not even 16. Actually, it's somewhere in the 16 range of Monday Night Football games. ABC gets the Super Bowl once every four years. Think about that. They have the rest of the year for WWE content. And hell, they put WrestleMania on national television. They can sell the ad rights the same way they sell the ad rights for the Super Bowl. You better talk business, Supreme. You better like, talk that business life. A hundred percent. Like, this is just, uh, that's a money move. They would make so much money doing that. That's good shit. Like, a hundred percent. I'm Vince McMahon, and that's not happening. <laughs> like, like <laughs> I, I, if Vince was smart as hell okay. and House of Mouse came oh, in 20%, a hundred percent. Yeah, that's the thing. See, Vince would Vince would be all for that as long as he still gets final say over what happens with WWE. Correct. Like, I can see the House of Moss going. That's the thing. The as House long of Moss goes, hey, use our stuff. Just yeah. give me the revenue stream, part of the revenue stream. And Vince would be like, oh, I still got full control to do whatever, but I'm bringing in extra money. Now I can go uh, do XFL 3.0 again. Listen, bruh. Yo, he, he, he would, he would. Don't you know, get me started on the XFL. It's, it's funny, it's funny how you bring up. Well, no, no, wait, hold on. It's funny how you bring up Disney, right? And you talk about how Disney does their thing because I've heard like from just the Disney source, right? Not Disney, a uh, Disney source, just Disney in general. Um, but when they bought Marvel and they bought Lucasfilms and they bought Pixar, they legit told those guys, "Hey, just keep doing your thing. We're just going to fund yep. you guys. We're not even going to we're not even put creative control." Like Kevin Feige, who is you know he is the Thanos of the Marvel, the real life Marvel world. He low key was like, "All right, well we'll we'll let you we'll get bought by Disney, but we still want to do this." And Disney was like, "Cool, do your thing. We'll just sit back and enjoy the ride. You guys just make the money." And that's what they did. So I, you know what? I can't fault it, man. I, I was like, I, I can agree with it. I think I, that's a great idea. Like 100%. Like even look at Disneyland, Disney World. Bring oh, a yeah, WWE yeah. attraction. You know damn well every single one of us would be at that shit. Oh, I'd be fraud. I'd go, I'd go bankrupt. Like, oh. they, they, go, they go, hey, <laughs> go, come to Disney World in Florida. Now we got a full <laughs> WWE experience. Run the ropes, full ring, a WrestleMania store open all year round. I, it, it, uh, to that point, access. They bring access to a Disney, uh, to a, to Disney World all year yeah. round. That's money. That's money. You don't have to wait till WrestleMania to go to uh, NXT. NXT moves from, bruh. NXT moves from full sale to Epcot. Let's go. I'm in. I'm in this right. Let's go. Look, it's a it's a weekly show at Disneyland. So you have all like assholes like us at Disneyland every week drinking. The kids are going to want to go to Disneyland. So, hell yeah, it's, it's free money. Even if the show at NXT is free, that place would be packed no matter what. And think about it. You don't even have to travel for takeovers. You could just make the arena bigger at Epcot for takeovers. You have a free space to do whatever you want. And I'm pretty sure Disney would, if they got the chance to, Disney should be buying, like, one of the major sports teams, they already have stakes in the networks. Like, could you imagine Disney owning part of WWE, owning a sports team? They would literally conquer everything. They are going to conquer everything. I need like, Money in the Bank and Cinderella's Castle for the women's type yeah, of women's yeah, briefcase. Yo, that could, would be awesome. Could you imagine right, that? I'm taking control of my show now. <laughs> yeah. I lost me there. Y'all lost yeah, me on that one. Exactly. Nah, I, was, nah, I, was I was on both. This ride out. I was letting this ride out because uh, we all had good ideas. But Cliff said Money in the Bank at Cinderella's me. Castle. And yeah, for the women's cool. briefcase. Yo, bro, uh, no, I, props to you, Cliff. You did try to clean it up and say the women's. Yeah, but I already soured the idea. Broke off the teacups. The <laughs> fuck? Of, I would watch the hell out of that. Instead of a briefcase, it'd be Cinderella's glass slipper. All right. That's so the we're gonna. I'm out. I'm out. So we're gonna move on. All right. Um, 
a lot of great ideas that we just talked about if uh, WWE were to sell to Disney, but we, only time can tell. So let's move on. It is now time for the best segment in the Three Count Podcast rundown, and that is the Red Dogs Power Rankings! Let's go! <laughs> hey, once again, we want to thank Hollow Drive for uh, their cover of Danger Zone. So thank you to those guys for letting us use that uh, use this song. So let's start us off, right? Number 10, right? This is May 5th for you guys. This will May 2nd, actually. Now that I think about it, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. It's not going to be a thing. You can tell I was drinking when I wrote this. So let's start us off with... Cliff, wait, the episode uh, drops on May 4th. We dropped this on Monday. What are you talking about, May 5th? That's tomorrow, technically. First of all, first of all it's... Did you, say May, did it's, you say May 4th is tomorrow? Well, no, I'm saying because no, I'm saying the show, the okay. show will hey, listen, air on hey, May fourth. Yeah, that's all messed up. And that's what I'm gonna talk it up to. Today is May fifth, but there's if a, a, the dude. listener is listening to this, it's May fourth. All right, well, we just film or not film or record on a Saturday, which is yeah, May second. Yeah. May third is the end of the week. That's what I meant. And then a new no, a new May third is forward. the beginning of the week. May third is Sunday. You know what? Hey, you stop. All right, I I, I it's how I write it out. Y'all gonna make yeah. go drink. Number you ten. Process. Listen here. You said it's the best segment. Stop trying to mess with Cliff's process. <laughs> Look, Disney, get your hands out of my pockets. <laughs> <laughs> this is the MCU. I'm doing what I can do. All right, number ten. Right. Let's bring it in with uh, Isaiah Swerve Scott. Uh, I thought cousin name. Swerve. Swerve got to be in. Number nine. Everybody's favorite tag team. The best friends. And crowd goes mild. Number eight. Uh, yeah, so I got to talk about this because uh, Chris and I both agreed on this match. Uh, Forgotten Sons had a hell of a match. With oh, the they are looking so good. Yeah. Shut up. That was just Wait, safer. I got I to gotta add my line I said in the chat, Cliff. Uh, there's just something about the Forgotten Sons winning matches and not being forgotten that doesn't sit right with me. I knew you were going <laughs> to say that. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven, uh, Charlotte Flair. She had a great match with me. Yeah, let's go. Let's give it up to her. Number six, um, she got her squash on uh, Nia Jax. Thank God she was unsafe this time. Number She's five, not like Number five, uh, I was pleasantly surprised at this match. Uh, Candice LeRae. I thought it was a fuck great- her. <laughs> Number four. Hey, don't uh, speak blasphemy at Candice LeRae. I oh you lucky oh, we didn't talk about Candice oh. LeRae today. Oh, no. you're so nah, don't, don't lucky you, we didn't. Don't I hold your horses. Rant, and you I might just hold your horses. Horses. I about I my pants and pants and pants. You're ruining the power ranking, as <laughs> Sorry, but I can't stand her. <laughs> the fucking first. boring, and this stupid silver fucking pink hair that she got, and this heel turn is absolutely fucking cringeworth. Oh, I'm, I'm a power bomb when I see him. Four. <laughs> Number four, Apollo Crews, Alistair Black, Rey Mysterio, their their match as a team, I had them all together. Number three, I do have to give this up. This was a great match, and I didn't know how incredible he was he was until I watched him in, uh, unleash his full arsenal. Uh, Lance Archer. Uh, I didn't expect a big man to be able to do a backflip off of walking on the, tire, on the ropes. That was ridiculous. Uh, number two. Actually, I had to set of the way I'm gonna I'm gonna switch this, uh, and it's the first time it's probably ever happened on this. So number two is gonna be Cody Rhodes. Um, I originally had him at number one. Um, I think the way that the match ended kind of kind of soured for me because I thought Darby it was just weird. It was just weird ending. <laughs> Cliff died. <laughs> oh man. That's amazing. <laughs> he died squinting. Wow. So, well, wow. So, do we just assume that number one was going to be Darby Allen? Well, Where? so, so when I set the match up, right, Darby Allen was set up, and the match was working. And I was like, "Yo, Darby's Darby's going to win this match." And I was like, "Yo, it's a great match." But what happened was, is once Cody did like the little weird kind of roll, I was like, uh, I thought it was going to be. It's just the way it was, and I was like, I just didn't like the way the match ended. I was just like, mm. you ever see like a person like just like, 
It is what it is. It was like, it's like that random person who like farts in church and just like walks out and doesn't let anybody know. Like, this is how it left me. I was like, mm, it's not good. Good. <laughs> everybody's looking at me so weird. I wish our our listeners could actually see this this image of everybody's glasses right now. <laughs> actually, wait, they can't. Because you guys can see it on my YouTube channel when I post this up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay, I'm going to do the, I, I want to announce the elephant in the room. Okay. You froze for a good minute and a half. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you were, squ- first of all, you were squinting like this in mid sentence. And then when you came, we all announced that, you know, oh, wow, Cliff just yeah. went. Like, bye-bye. And we all looked up and was like, okay, what happened? And then you came back out of nowhere and continued a sentence that you were not talking about before you froze. I don't even know who the fuck number one was in the power rankings. (laughs) Oh, wow. (laughs) Was number number one Darby Allen? No, it was... No, who was number one? (laughs) So so let's let's talk about it originally, okay? So in the original list that I had, we're going to go... We'll go back just real quick, right? So we'll start. At, we're, what number did we mess up? No, we heard two. Okay. It, it cut, so caused an explanation for uh, yeah, number so, two. All right, all right. So originally number two was Keith Lee. Number one was Cody Rhodes. But I flipped them just mm-hmm. as we we're doing it. Okay. So okay. Cody became the number two, and Keith Lee became number one. So if you're wondering why I chose Cody, the way the match ended, like the match was great all the way through. I thought the ending on it just kind of like sputtered and it just stopped. Uh, Keith Lee's match I felt was consistent all the way through, even like up to the finish. I thought it was great, so that's the reason why I decided to switch him at the last minute. But there's your explanation. Okay. Alrighty. Wow. That was a. That's the best. This was the best power rankings just for that moment that it froze and we just stared at you like, what? <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. So your power great. your power rankings. I have one thing to say about it. Yo, we couldn't rate Apollo higher for his slap on Andrade. So, all right. Oh, so to, oh yes. We yeah. get, tell, tell them the rules. Tell them the rules. Yeah, you are, you are, you are our, our guest. So the way the power rankings work is you've had to wrestle a match, right? And then you have to – the match can end funny, right? But there's no – no segments are allowed in there. Otherwise, because honestly – and we That's have, number one. We've, already, we've had this. We've had this issue before, right? Because Cody Rhodes and those – the when he got whipped, oh, my God, when he got beat with that belt <laughs> – <laughs> that would have been that would have been number one because like he obviously went through the whole thing. He all ten lashes. It was what it was. But unfortunately, he didn't wrestle the match, and I couldn't put him in the power ranks for that one week. So it's the same thing with this. Yes, that slap where he knocked out all the English words out of Andrade's mouth. Um, that was amazing. But unfortunately, he can't be there. Oh, yeah. so. uh, uh, supreme, supreme. So I saw on Twitter when he, when uh, Apollo slapped Andrade. Somebody said uh, that Apollo slapped the Cien Almas out of Andrade. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, that is where we will end this show. Wait, hold ladies wait, and wait, gentlemen, wait, 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 hold on, wait, wait. More, I got one more thing. Got more one more thing. thing. One more thing before we go. Hey, Supreme, give us your honest thoughts on Tamina. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm going to keep this a thousand. So I was talking to. Um, so I played WWE Supercard the game, and I had a bunch of people who we recorded videos and stuff. So I was talking to people about Tamina, and I'm going to keep it a thousand. I want her to go over at Money in the Bank. <laughs> Can I give you my reason why? Uh, yes, by all means. Okay. He, he, can't, he can't even... He, we have lost our... our, our by all means. He, he okay. doesn't have... His, he can't, he can't but, hear. Close so. this video... This video no, is going up, right? Are we posting? Uh, this has to be posted. This has to be posted. Chaz choking on his drink. This has to be posted. We have to get a clip this of this show out will there. Actually, this show is not ending right now. Yeah, I'm making an executive <laughs> decision. I have a rant about Tamina. Uh, hold on, hold on. No, let, let, let Supreme finish. Let Supreme finish. Yeah, and Supreme. then you go on your rant. The reason why I want to go over, because I would love to see the Bailey sasha storyline without the title involved. Because mm. I'm, I'm thinking about it this way. Bailey cost Sasha the money in a bank berth. Sasha let 
Bailey get her fucking face kicked in. But then they beat up Tamina recently. What I think is going to happen is literally the same hap that happened with the Sasha versus I can't remember who she faced for that money. Was it Carmella? I can't remember. I feel like Sasha's going to try to interfere and cause Bailey to lose. Then I really hope that somehow the money in the bank person cashes in, but I doubt that's going to happen. But I can see Tamina going over and literally just being a transitional champion to the money in the bank briefcase holder. Like, I saw a 100% I can see happening. Like, I was actually saying that to my brother, but I said to have Sasha win the uh, money in the bank. And then so? it didn't have see, to me to just hold the title for like two seconds. Two see, I wouldn't, seconds. I wouldn't want that to happen because it, it feels less more transitional than that. Like, because you would see it coming. Because 100%, everyone goes to me is going to lose. And, like, it's the same level of uh, Santino versus uh, Daniel Bryan in the Elimination Chamber for me. Because you would look at that shit and go, did that actually almost happen? Like, if Tamina would go, everybody goes, what the fuck? She came back for three weeks and now she has a title run? Because, like, don't get me started on who I want to win the Money in the Bank women's match. Go ahead, Chaz. You're bursting at the seams. Go ahead and try to rip me a new one because I will have an argument back. I just want Tamina to get released like everybody else. Why? <laughs> Tamina is absolutely god awful. She is garbage. Oh my goodness. You want to know who's better than Tamina? Who? My unborn child is a better wrestler than Tamina. You want to know who cuts a better promo than Tamina? You want to know who? Who? The damn mute that is on Patapsico Avenue downtown can cut a better promo than Tamina. You want to know who throws a better super kick than Tamina? You want to know who? Who? My unborn child throws a better fucking super kick in the womb than Tamina. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Goddamn shame that she is any type of related to the Hall of Famer and the great that is Demi Superfly fucking Snooker. It's a goddamn shame. She's a fucking disappointment to every second generation wrestler on the face of this god green planet. She needs to go far, far away like Shrek and fucking Donkey. She looks like fucking Shrek. She sounds like an idiot. She looks stupid every time she goes out there. How can you be late to a fucking queue to super kick somebody when your fucking music is fucking playing in the fucking performance center? How the fuck do you do that? You have got to be absolutely fucking garbage to do some shit like that. And by frankly, I just have no rep for her. And they want to come out with some... She fucking wore that stupid ass shirt on SmackDown. Nobody's meaner than Tamina. What the fuck? Every the fucking bully that I had in middle school was meaner than Tamina. <laughs> all right, all right. So, so fucking Damien Fatal is meaner than Tamina. You wanna know who else is meaner? I'm meaner than fucking Tamina. God damn it. If Tamina wins that goddamn SmackDown Women's Championship, I swear on everything that is holy, I will not watch a single episode of SmackDown as long as she is champion. I will boycott SmackDown. I will put it on Twitter. I will go on every social media, and I will discredit everything that is Vince McMahon owned. I mean, I don't think you really have to. Have to. I mean, XFL, Pro Icon, uh... Then he have a, a, a singing career. Like, he's already kind of, like, shot himself in the foot with all the other avenues he did. So, I mean, like, you don't... Amazing. Know, That's you don't amazing. Know, that. and, uh, thank you, Supreme. I, I'm actually glad that you had a positive thought about <laughs> Tamina. Because I don't think we would have got the epic rant that I was looking for <laughs> if you had agreed with that, with Chaz's viewpoint. So thank like, you. Thank like, you. Like, you. Like, you've asked me, like, questions of, like, how I think, like, I'm thinking it's storyline base. Like, I'm okay Fuck with that me. shit. She's terrible. I don't care how storyline base, base goes out the window when you're complete trash. Yo, they had a child win the tag team titles. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, with I never, and that's, that was trash, too. 
So let Tamina have her like couple hey, of days. No. Let no. Nia win she needs, the money in hey, the you know, At least the kid was entertaining. Starbucks. She needs to go work at a fucking Starbucks. <laughs> Tamina's exactly. Tamina's not entertaining. Every time I see her, I want to go. I, I'd rather watch fucking debate team. You know what I want? I'd rather watch It's Academic on CBS on a Saturday morning than fucking watch Tamina fucking do anything as far as entertaining me. She does not entertain me. You're I'm right. ending the show. We have to, we are done with the show. If she God goes over, it. I want to have another conversation with you about it. No, we're not, I don't want to talk about Tamina. She's Ladies and gentlemen, over. this has been a... This was a good episode of the three count, but I got infected and fell out. I don't even know I'm going to post this damn episode anymore because of this stupid-ass Tamina rant. Good gracious. Ladies and gentlemen, anyway, Nick Sicken will be on our on our next show on the three count presents. I don't even know what the fuck the show is called. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys so clip you in this damn thing i can't do this shit all right guys ah, make sure you yeah. follow us on all hey yo you walked off so you get the final walk off um so you guys will catch us on all your favorite social media platforms nick sicken will be joining us at you know the three count presents now entering the ring so hey for our guest <laughs> for our guest supreme i am your co-host the number two in charge Clifford, Red Dog Miller, and, uh, you know, JJ, and we have Idol, and then we have the one who walked off. So, we'll see you guys next time.